My name is Nani Koshi. I'm a master student here at the University of Michigan, studying flu performance, digital media, and discovering new transdisciplinary ways to create interesting performing arts. My master's thesis show was called Asian and Rake. It's a story of two goddesses. Each represents the force of good and evil, a classic angel and demon type of story, which results in Asia offering herself as the ultimate sacrifice to save the world, and then conquers death through her resurrection. The story incorporates video game, film, animation, and live perform music. My role was the director, producer, video editor, and flute soloist. Asia and Rake is the third and final multimedia show in my series. I have always knew that I wanted to perform something like Disney's Fantasia Live since my childhood, and that became my drive to continue being innovative and to collaborate with different art forms and cutting-edge technologies to create theatrical experience to tell a compelling story. My first show at U of M's video studio was called The Journey. The theme was about the beauty and hopes we have for a destination versus the obstacles on that journey. My senior thesis was called Catching Dream. We used original poetry inspired by the music and theme of dreams at the start of each song. The audience was then brought on a journey through fantasy, time, and reality. For Asian and Rake, I drew a lot of inspiration from Blizzard's Diablo, Disney's Fantasia, and the Harry Potter storyline. The production was divided up into two parts. The live music called the in-game section, and the transitions called the cutscene section. My script writer Janelle Hager and I talk about story development, music matching, and selecting pieces that best match each chapter. The character designer Hui Ru helped visualize Asia and Rake. So I'm Raj Bergman. I'm a senior in the art school and a senior in the business school. And I was uh, reached out to by I call five or six months ago. So I did everything in, in the visual process from script development into storyboards, final line art designs, and I put it into a large project in After Effects and composited every shot into more of a sort of storybook animation. Hi, I'm Julia Braid. I'm a storyboard artist. I graduated from LSA with a degree in film, and I got involved in this project through Raj, actually, the other artist. And he said, "Hey, Julia, it was fun working with you in Animation Club. How about working with me on this project?" And I didn't really know much about it, but I thought it'd be fun to work with Raj, and Raj has good judgment. So let's check it out. And I met with Nonako, and I just really fell in love with the project and the designs. I thought, "Yeah, this is going to be a good time." So. And that's how it all started out. Storyboarding this was an interesting challenge because the aspect ratio was so wide. This is the widest widescreen that Raj and I may ever get to deal with in our careers. So it was interesting trying to balance the close-ups of the characters with the landscape, especially knowing that once this is on the screen, any close-ups are going to be so big, and the entire frame is going to be so visible. So that's a challenge, but it's also a very interesting opportunity to really play with composition and see what we can do with it. We were really insp inspired by old storybooks. You like telling the backstory of some fable or world or something like that. There are different like video games that have kind of these cutscenes where the ink splashes on the page, and it's really nice compositing. That's one inspiration. And then Fantasia films; those all served as inspiration for the project. Hi, my name is Natalie Moeller. I'm an alumna of the University of Michigan graduate program in music composition. I love participating in collaborative projects, particularly those that draw in contributors from a diverse range of art forms. So when Noniko approached me about writing the original music for the animations that serve as the backbone of the story in this Asian Rake production, I immediately said yes. The process in this project for me was a little unique. Given the timeline of this project, Noniko and I decided that I would work instead from the pre-recorded narration, and the narration became the framework 
for the pacing of each of the scenes. And when Oniko sent me the first assembled scene with all the effects and all these layers of art and music and story together, I was so excited because I knew that we were creating something unique and great. Her robes whipped about her in the wind. Her eyes widened at the sight of Aisha's restored world, and a sneering smile crept across her face. Her fingers twitched eagerly. She approached Aisha. Aisha turned as well, keeping Rake in sight. They paced around each other like two jungle cats, waiting to pounce. For the in-game section, I wanted it to look like you're watching a movie or playing a video game. So Matt created a virtual world with characters that represent Asia and Rick's spirit to fly around the forest in response to my flu inputs. My name is Matthew Bain. Um, I'm responsible for the live music visuals portion of Naniko's concert. I'm pretty much taking the microphone inputs of her performance and turning them into visuals that you see behind her. She kind of had a vision for the overall story and what she sort of wanted to tell. And then it was my job to essentially build a 3D world that can react to her performance. Essentially create a video game. The two primary pieces of software that I use are Max MSP and Unity, which provides the game engine. For this, I take the audio inputs from the microphones, which includes like your pitch, your amplitude, frequencies and all that sort of stuff and I do a real-time analysis of that in Max MSP and then the resulting data goes over to a game engine and that will generate visuals whether they're icicles or trees growing or fantastical effects of whatever nature there may be required by the story. Naniko really wanted to have kind of a, a video game feel to it so I have an Xbox 360 controller here for me to control some of the gross movements of the characters. But in addition to that, I have my smartphone here, which essentially functions as a touch-based control interface. So this is kind of like a customized interface. It's unique to her performance. My inspiration has come from Disney's Fantasia. Historically, they would get a piece of music from an orchestra, and then they would animate all of the frames in perfect synchronous to the music. This system here that I've built essentially takes that into the real-time game engine, facilitate the ability to just take microphone inputs and drive the entire visuals that way so they're no longer tied down to the nuances of a click track or a pre-recorded set of music. This system kind of helps illustrate and visualize in some respects the communication that occurs between different musicians, which is cool. So what Monaco did was she took what was a concept of a 
cartoon Disney-like creation. And that meant was this, we had this enormous animation that we had to record live because it couldn't be recreated. So we put together all these systems and, and that designed to record it. And that was, that was basically what I wanted. My name is Jeff Alder. I work at the Digital Media Commons Video Studio Consultant, uh, mainly the lighting department. So I work with Nautico on three different productions, and what I have noted, from day one when Nautico walked in, she had, it wasn't just a flute performance. She had a story, she had visual ideas, whether it be with lighting, atmosphere, uh, projection. Uh, she always cobbled together an entire multi facet of the entire show. And if you just look at the credits at the end, you will see so many people. Uh, from the narrator to the story writer to the animators to Matt doing the interactive visuals. That's what it takes to be a professional musician, I think, in the new paradigm. And the only way you can do that is to, to do like a movie director, is to know what every department is doing. is success for the future, being able to collaborate with so many people to meet a big deadline with making it a fun experience for the other artists on the team. And when she put this project together, I saw her spend ample time on the 3D lab alone of learning about motion capture with this green screen idea that she was hoping to incorporate in a project. And she never used it. And the decision was based not that it was a bad idea, but to be realistic to meet the deadline of the size of the scope of this project that she would be able to do it good enough. But she spent the time to learn. Nanako was great in helping out at the very end, you know, adding more effects and compositing it, timing it to the animation, doing some vital edits. She performed as an actor, and after putting all that together, the whole thing was about something that it's easy to forget, and that's the point. Now, that's what all started. She wanted to come in and do her first show on the capture a booth cycle. I'm really happy with the final results. most satisfied when I hear that a show has made a positive impact on my audience. Throughout my years at UFM, I am really grateful that all three shows have accomplished that. Thanks to all who have worked with me and my crazy ideas, though complex and confusing at times, I can finally say that these years were anything but a waste, and now I have no regrets when I graduate next year. <laughs>